Good morning, Pastor Wayne Carpenter from Christian Church for All Nations. I'm the worship director and this is our morning devotional. Thank you for joining us. Today we're going to talk about greater love. And the foundational scripture we're going to work with is John 15, 11. Jesus says, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay one's life down for his friends. Now many of us will probably think that Christ dying on the cross, you know, is probably the single most selfless effort uh, that anyone did in love for their friends. And personally, I can't imagine uh, anything more than that. But Jesus had a little bit different perspective on it. Let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for today. I thank you for the body of Christ. I thank you for the joy that we have in the Holy Spirit and the fellowship of the saints. Help us to understand, Lord, you've called us to greater things and help us to lay down those things that are temporal to, and cleave to those things that are eternal. In Jesus' name, amen. So in John, uh, that was John 15, 11. In John 15, 20, uh, Jesus first he says this, he says, remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. I think this is a good understanding of how our relationship with Christ will always be. He will always be the greater and we will always be friends or servants, but he will always be preeminent in our lives. I don't think this is what he's talking about when he talks about greater works that we will do. And that is the next scripture. And this is actually John 14, 12. He says this earlier. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. Now, in my mind, this doesn't even seem possible. That, um, I, But I really, ultimately, I have to believe it. I just may not understand it right now. And I think it's the because I go to the Father part that Christ is referring to here is why the greater works are even possible. It's not that we are greater than him. Of course not. But it's the works that we're going to do are greater because Jesus had a purpose. And if there was any one purpose, other than all the wonderful things that we enjoy as Christians, to have him as our example, to have him as something we can lift up and say, this is holy, this is pure, this is what is right, and this is what God intends. So we can do all those things uh, because of Jesus Christ. But his most important purpose really had to been restoring our relationship with God. After the breakdown in the Garden of Eden, we things were not ever the same until Jesus came back and Jesus restored that relationship. So we can't do that. Only Jesus could. So this is, I think, where the separation comes from as far as the greater works that we are destined to do. So Jesus says this just before we get to the end of this foundational scripture. He does say this. He says, this is my commandment that you love one another as I loved you. And this is a concept of self-sacrifice, I think, is something we can live every day. It's not a uh, grand event like, let's say, dying on the cross. Certainly, we don't have to martyr ourselves. Jesus took care of that where we don't have to sacrifice ourselves, or we may, but we don't have to be sacrificing ourselves every day and dying, literally dying, so that God's will can be accomplished. Dying to self is hard sometimes. Um, hard dying would be easier. 
actually really truly actually physically dying would be easier so than some of the dying to self that we have to do in order that someone else's life could be better. To be misunderstood is probably one of the worst. You are doing the right thing for the right reason for, and for the right purpose, but nobody understands it. And that's probably one of the hardest of dying to self because you always want to right that. You want to always want to fix that. Always want to say, no, hey, does anybody know, look at me? I'm right. I'm right. You know, and it's, it's perfectly natural. And actually, to the extent that anybody would acknowledge that we are right and they would acknowledge that the Holy Spirit's working through us, it's all the better for the body of Christ. We know, though, through love that many times the works that we do will be done in secret. And that is with our relationship with the Father that we enjoy. So we have that in Christ. It's one of the things that if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, that is a relationship you can walk in every single day. That you have that personal uh, communication with God and you know that the things that you're doing are seen by Him and approved by God. So... It's our love for each other that forms this unbreakable bond. I won't hate you. Uh, I won't try to minimize who you are. And I won't try to outcompete you. I won't try to retaliate for wrongs. won't react badly or injure you for one reason and one reason only, and that's love. The kind of love that only God can generate. And this is what it looks like. It's love that's centered in forgiveness self-sacrifice surrender commitment perseverance patience and deference many more things of course but if these are the centerpieces of what love looks like and the reason why as a believer my love towards another believer is credible or it's even possible is because of my respect for the Holy Spirit that is deposited in that person. That person is part of the body of Christ. They have part of the answer to what God wants is God's purpose here on this earth. And no matter what their behaviors or no matter what their thing is that irritates me or I think is not really purposeful and I, I ignore or I, I kind of don't think it's important. God thinks it's important. God thinks you are important. God thinks you are precious. I must think that as well. Now, as you hear those words, you're probably like, uh, okay, so it's a rule. We follow this rule and we're loving. No, that's not what that is. If we really have that relationship with God, then the Holy Spirit is the level of respect that we're operating on. We're actually seeing God... We're seeing other people through God's eyes. We're seeing other people through God's purpose in their life. And when it comes time and push comes to shove, and it's us or them, we choose God's purpose in that person's life. And that is our self-sacrifice. We lay down our lives for our friends. We lay down our lives for the people that we love so that God's purpose can be accomplished in them. That's the sign of a Christian who has that relationship with God. It's not very obvious most of the time. Most of the time it actually might look like weakness. But it's not. In God's, in God's purposes, it really is. What holds the body of Christ together is how we're going to move forward. If we move forward in love in this respect. I've met many people in my life that have been influential in getting me to that next step, if you will, and getting me to a certain comfort level with other Christians, shall we say, who do not believe exactly like I do. And I'm grateful for that. Because the kingdom of God is much bigger than I ever thought that it was. I was really raised in a religious background. And it was a very narrow focus of who a Christian would be, well, who, shall we say, the, uh, the organization that I was with would consider a Christian. They wouldn't even consider somebody being Christian unless they were part of the organization. Well, certainly it's that's far from the truth, and I think it's easy to prove. But in love, we understand it even more because we can embrace everybody. There's a lot of work to do ahead of us. And I think those that are walking in love 
see that. Those that are walking in love want to come together and see God's purposes. I'm very excited about that. We're going to do that on Friday night. We have a Friday night of worship coming up. And we have people from different churches coming to worship with us. That's a piece of the puzzle. Worship is wonderful, and it's an experience that God has blessed us with, and we're going to take that in, and we're going to be enriched by that. But keep in mind, these musicians have to come together and have some sort of an agreement on the chords, what we play, things like this. And the way we get to where we're going to get to in, in the night of worship is to surrender to each other. I can tell you that even though I'm in charge of the event, that I have left the door open for others to come in and influence the event, add music, add their two cents, if you will. And this is where we have to be in the body of Christ. We have to be inclusive. We have to bring everybody together. It's time. It's time to put this together and divine together in love and let God take us uh, to the next step and do those greater works because they're desperately needed uh, in these days. Well, thanks for joining me this morning. Uh, before we pray, I just remind you that we have a service at 11 a.m. on Sunday. That's our main service. And at 6.30 on Wednesday, that's another service that we have in the middle of the week for 6.30 to 7.30, Worship and the Word. And on Tuesday, Mornings with Pat. That's a traditional service we have at Christian Church for All Nations. Also a reminder, as you will probably notice, over time we have needs in tech. We're making strides, but we're making strides with people who are just learning the process, myself included. So if you have experience in tech and you want to serve God, Christian Church for All Nations is a very good place for you to be. Pray about that, please. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, that our culture and our, our, our just our culture and the way we do things, Lord, in commerce and everything, I'm grateful for the, the great solid foundation you've given us of wealth in this country, and I honor you for that. We honor you with our tithes. We honor you by giving. We're the most generous nation on the planet, and I thank you for that, Lord. As you give us the abundance, we'd give it out and make sure that as many people as possible are taken care of. I do know, Lord, that you want to take care of us as well, and you continually pour into us, Lord. And as you do that, help us to know that these things that we've learned in our commercial sector and in our culture aren't always in line with your word and that we don't always have to climb the ladder. We don't always have to get ahead and put somebody else down. We don't always have to, to, to preserve our life, but we can sacrifice pieces of our life one by one for others. And that runs counter to many things that we've learned or the things we've been taught. Maybe success in business doesn't exactly run that way all of the time, but we know that your love does. We just ask you for that love in our hearts. Set us free, Lord, from the bondage of self. And we just thank you that it's possible in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a good day.